Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors, Amazon and Trend Micro. Welcome back to theCUBE, live inside uh, the Venetian Convention Center in Las Vegas, AWS reInvent 2014, third year of the show, my, uh, our second year here with theCUBE, wall-to-wall -wall coverage, 13,500 people in attendance, uh, lots of activity going on here in the expo floor. Uh, joining me for this segment is Rick Braddy, who is the president and CEO of SoftNAS. Uh, Rick, thank you for joining us on theCUBE. Yeah, it's great to be here. All right, so uh, there's so much uh, announcement, so much going on in the ecosystem. Uh, Rick, you're obviously from the, the storage side of the house there. Can, can you give our audience, since it's your first time on, a little bit of background on who SoftNAS is and how Amazon fits into your business model? Sure, yeah, well SoftNAS is a uh, NAS filer for the cloud. We're uh, one of the leaders in this space. We got in early last year in the Amazon cloud. Uh, we support other platforms, but this is our best you know, selling platform for sure on Amazon. And, it's just been an incredible ride for us uh, being on AWS. Yeah, so can, can you give us a little, little bit of a profile of the company? How long has the company been around? Sure. How many employees? What, what's the funding? Yeah, we are an angel funded company. We've been in business uh, since 2012, late 2012, about two years. And um, yeah, we've, uh, we're about at 12 employees. We have a lot of contractors. Uh, everything we do is in the cloud. All of our uh, operating uh, development, everything's done through the cloud. Uh, Angel funded out of Houston, that's where we started. And uh, man, we've just been growing like crazy. This, uh, this cloud is a tremendous market. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. The storage market uh, is one of those that's just a highly fragmented and rather entrenched market. Right. Uh, think about, you know, the, the number one player only has 25% of the market. How has cloud changed the way that we think of storage? I mean, obviously, you know, you're not building any hardware. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, what, what do you see in the storage market? Well, I mean, we see that customers are moving their, their most business critical, mission critical applications now to the cloud. I mean, we, we put web servers and those sorts of things in the cloud you know, for a long time, but now we're moving our mainstream, uh, most mission critical applications. And of course, when you move the apps, the data follows the apps. So it's moving to cloud too. All right, Rick, you, could, you said mission critical application. Can you talk to us about what use cases, what applications are you seeing, what's going in the cloud, what's not going oh, in the cloud? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So, we see a couple of, uh, two or three different use cases. Obviously, born in the cloud type companies like SaaS companies, uh, they start out in the cloud. Uh, we see a lot of enterprises though, starting to move major B2B applications and B2C applications into the cloud. And I would say that we're seeing an increase in uh, medium-sized corporations going all in into the cloud. They're moving everything out of their own data center, powering down the old uh, expensive storage arrays and you know, just uh, turning off their, their data centers and going uh, pure cloud. All right, so you guys partner with more than just Amazon. Can you talk a little bit about the ecosystem you play in the other cloud providers? Sure, we, uh, we're cross-platform. We operate as a virtual appliance, uh, Linux, so we run everywhere. We, we run on AWS, uh, Azure, uh, we even support vCloud Air, uh, ESXi, uh, VMware, and Hyper-V. Right. And Great. we've got more in the pipelines, you might imagine. So can you explain to us a little bit, how, how does your pricing model work then? Is uh, you know, the software from you, what services, say from Amazon, do I need to buy to be able to spin up an instance? Sure. Well, we, uh, we're through, sold through the AWS marketplace today. Uh, we're one of the leading products in the storage and backup category, and uh, we're sold hourly. Uh, we have different size products. We have an express edition uh, up to one terabyte, a standard edition up to 20 terabytes, and then our enterprise edition goes up to 16 petabytes. Uh, and so they're all hourly based. Uh, there are options to purchase annually as well. All right, so the storage world is a lot of times talking about you know, you know, how many you know, cents per gigabyte I have to spend. Do you have similar metrics for that? Or? Yeah, we, we really don't. We sit on top of the elastic block storage, so we don't charge extra for the storage itself. That's just pure Amazon uh, storage. And we also, uh, I think one of the unique things we do is we take Amazon's S3 backbone, which is highly durable, redundant, uh, and we, we uh, treat it like a block device, and then we uh, actually turn that into NFS SIFs and uh, iSCSI shared storage, built on top of S3, actually, with all the NAS filer features that you'd get you know, on top of S3. 
Okay, so, but I guess, how do you guys price your model then on top of that? I understand we, you're, so you're we not charge by the hour Amazon. based okay. on the instance size. Okay. Yeah, to answer your question. All right, uh, so I, you do an EBS, you do an S3, do I need to do anything from the compute side on Amazon to be able to deploy your solution? Sure, you would uh, mount the storage, uh, the NAS power storage via NFS, uh, SIFS, SMB, or iSCSI. Yeah. Okay. Um, Talk to us a little bit about your customer adoption. Can you, do you have any numbers that you can share? It's kind of momentum of the company. Yeah, when we uh, launched on the AWS Marketplace about a year ago, I think we were early on. We've been around about six, eight months, and uh, we probably had 15 customers. Since we uh, launched on the Marketplace, we've had about 1,900% growth in new customer acquisitions. Our revenue has grown an average uh, sustained growth of 45 plus percent per month. Uh, so it's been quite a ride. Yeah. Uh, since you guys do, do a cross-platform, uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and on, on VMware, uh, you know, can you can talk? How are customers uh, seeing this? You know, can you give us uh, some customer stories as to how they're embracing uh, cloud solutions more versus, you know, thinking of storage as something that they have to own on-site? Right. Well, I think you know, for us, they treat storage just like they would treat a SQL database. It's a play, It's another infrastructure component that they need to be uh, highly available. Um, and protect their data, and pr make sure there's no downtime. Uh, because they're, like I said, they're either deploying all their apps or they're porting their entire uh, legacy app inf infrastructure I for IT into the cloud, or they're putting a major B2B application in the cloud like Boeing, you know, that they use to build a uh, supply chain for their airplane. So, I mean, this is like bi super business critical stuff that they're doing in the cloud now. Yeah. All right. Um, what do you see as kind of the largest impediment or customers just getting it? They, I mean, obviously a show like this, uh, I think we have people that are bought into the whole discussion of moving to the cloud. Uh, do you have a specific market segment that, that you go into, kind of, you know, I mean, SMB Enterprise, you know, in between? Well, we're, uh, we're pretty horizontal. We work across all the different use cases, uh, but we, we do see, a, I would say, a, a large adoption in SaaS, you know, technology companies moving to the cloud. Uh, like the street, for example. Um, we see a lot in video, you know, companies like Netflix and Stars, our customers. Uh, we see um, a lot of publishers, you know, with a lot of video moving to the cloud as well. All right, uh, last year at the show, Amazon uh, did a lot to update their storage portfolio to increase a lot of SSD deployments. Right. Um, talk a little bit about how when Amazon you know, expands their ser service offerings, how does that uh, impact you guys? Right, well it really helps because you know, customers need more IOPS, so uh, the, the idea to have uh, provisioned IOPS on uh, elastic block storage just really helps a lot for performance but the, uh, the directly attached instances on each EC2 instance gives us a great way to do caching to even further improve the performance uh, you know, with each, each of our controllers. That Because our controllers operate as an EC2 instance, we leverage that SSD that way. Yeah. Um, wondering if you have any you know, good customer stories that you can talk about as to you know, what, what they can do different now using your solution in the cloud versus what they would be doing if they just own their storage on their own location. Yeah, you know, I guess uh, uh, one I like is the street. Uh, the street had their own data center. They were had a pretty traditional VMware-based uh, data center running, uh, I think, an EMC storage array. You know, and the story they tell us is that you know they looked at their maintenance renewal cost of that storage array, plus what they were spending to manage their data center, and they realized they weren't just renewing that uh, storage. Uh, bill, they were actually buying into their own data center for the next three to five years. That, that was really the decision. So they were able to move to the cloud for less than what it would have cost them to uh, to renew the storage bill. So I think, you know, just the the price performance trade-offs that companies are seeing and then, and of course, you know, as we heard from Andy earlier today, just the flexibility to burst and, you know, uh, not have to pay for all that capacity is, is pretty tremendous business benefit for customers. All right. So Share with us a little bit about your experience partnering with Amazon. You know, what's it like to work with them? You know, so many people kind of look at the Amazon ecosystem and say, you know, how much do they listen to you? Andy Jassy said that it's not a winner take all, uh, that their partners are going to be able, you know, to take their fair, fair share. But what, what's your experience been working with Amazon? We found, uh, especially the AWS Marketplace team, which is how we're going to market, uh, been a great group to work with. They're very supportive. Uh, they definitely do listen and incorporate, you know, feedback and, you know, as fast as they can, given the development cycles and other priorities, probably. But yeah, they're a great team to work with, and yeah, it's it's a it's a partnership for real because I mean they're getting part of the revenue 
uh, that we generate through the marketplace, so we're in it together. Yeah, that's right. good. Um, how about your go-to-market? Is, uh, is it direct sales for you, you work through a certain channel? How, how, how does, I, obviously the, the marketplace, people can just go on and click it, but is right. that mostly how you're getting your business? Or That's one way. How do you way. drive it? Yeah, we, well, we work with the, uh, the AWS field, so we overlay, is the way I like to think of it, into the field, and then you know, we also do uh, you know, demand generation, and uh, we funnel mo all the leads or traffic from our site to, the, to our listings on the marketplace for, for conversion or e-commerce. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, Rick, have you had a chance, uh, I did, don't know how much you've had a chance to look around the show, what, what's your vibe of the show? Have you been here previous years? Or? Uh, I was here last year. All right, you oh, know, it's what, just what, what's your take on the show kind of last year versus this year? You know, it just seems like there's a, it's a lot more energy, a lot more people uh, um, of all, all different types and uh, business, types of businesses, uh, people that are on Amazon, people that are trying to figure it out still, you know, they're relatively new to the platform. So it's, yeah, but it's definitely a happening thing. It's uh, it's pretty incredible. Yeah, I, I mean, for, for me personally, I, there, there was a lot of energy last year, but it, it's just bigger this year. And it's, it's some of the people I've talked to working the booths here, as they said, you know, when people come, uh, which uh, last night there was a lot of traffic. This Today I think a lot of people are in sessions for the most part, uh, but the people that show up are, it's like they're like pre-qualified. It's like, you know, not they're just coming and saying, you know, hey, you, you got a t-shirt for me, but where can I learn about your product? They're, they're bought in and they're using it. Has that been your experience? It is, and, and the thing that's, uh, that amazes me is just the, the size companies and the brands. I mean, we're seeing, I believe, the mainstream adoption of the tornado sort of kicking in here for the cloud. And uh, so we're, we're seeing companies of all sizes, but I mean brands that everybody's heard of, or they're all moving to the cloud now. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm curious, we've had a few more companies that are you know, jumping on the ecosystem here, and in the storage space, uh, you know, Zadara's been in for a while, but you know, NetApp is kind of a big move uh, to, with, with the cloud on tap. Uh, is that something that has impacted your business, something you're seeing in the marketplace yet? Well, uh, NetApp just announced and just uh, posted their product today. Uh, so yeah, it just started. You know, hey, we, we, uh, we have a lot of respect for Zadera and certainly NetApp. I mean, uh, you have a great company, great product technology. Uh, we just say, hey, welcome. You know, uh, customer choice is a great thing. Uh, welcome, welcome to our world. We've been here for a year and uh, yeah, we, uh, we think that NetApp showing up here uh, is great. I mean, it validates uh, the market for us and uh, you know, the rising tide of the cloud's going to float all boats, so we're happy right. about it. So, Rick, want to give you the opportunity. What, what are you guys showing off at the show? Did you have any you know, recent announcements that you could share with our audience? Yeah, well, we, uh, we announced actually support for scale-out Docker, so uh, uh, there's an increased uh, uh, development interest in the uh, Docker container-type platform, so we, I think, are one of the first storage vendors to embrace Docker and enable uh, scale-out Docker capabilities, so that's one new thing. Uh, we also have a new Express Edition, so it's a, it's a really uh, less expensive version, uh, one terabyte uh, ceiling on storage, but it's um, very very affordable from like 18 cents an hour. And we've improved our uh, high availability capabilities and uh, you know just a number of improvements overall with the 3.2 product release. Well, well Rick, Rick, you had me at Docker. So can you talk a little bit more about uh, this kind of scale out capabilities with Docker? Uh, I actually was talking to the Cluster HQ guys earlier today uh, with their Flocker initiative. So uh -huh. you know, storage is one of those things that we feel needs to be worked on a little bit for Docker. So right. you know, what, what's your experience been so far? Um, tell me a little bit about what customers are asking you for. Yeah, well we see a lot of customers interested in Docker and, you know, and a lot of developers and of course, you know, it's great when you're in development, but ultimately that stuff's going to probably get put in production. And so we think that getting involved with a Docker during the development cycle, what we found is our infrastructure, get, like a database, like I said earlier, gets designed into the IT stack. So uh, we want to make sure that we're you know, involved early with the development teams. And we, we have a free micro instance so developers can use our product for free. Uh, but then, you know, ultimately our goal is to get our product in production, obviously, with the Docker apps as they go to production. And uh, in, in order to scale Docker out, chances are if you've got files or data, especially, uh, you know, I mean, video, there's PHP, all kinds of files, you're going to need to store it somewhere. So shared storage is not going to go away. It's going to just continue to grow in the cloud like it has on premise. Yeah, um, I, I, I'm curious, do you see a point or are you going to be able to, you know, move your instances between different 
the solutions that you offer, say go from Amazon to, to Azure, because uh, for Docker today, I, I can move the application, but you know, right. I'm, not, I'm not usually bringing my data with it. We can, we actually are cross-platform. We have a, a feature called Snap Replicate. We can replicate between any, any platform to any platform, so we have customers that'll migrate data from on-premise into the cloud, for example, using our Snap Replicate capabilities. All right, Rick, uh, last question I have for you is, you know, what, what's the coolest thing you've seen here at the show or uh, you know, anything customers have asked you or talked to you about that really caught your, your ear and eye so far? Yeah, you know, I've been so busy, I haven't actually had time to walk the show for, but uh, I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff here. I mean, just in glancing around, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, good question. I'm not sure I, 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 could, I could say what's the most cool thing. I think the most cool thing, honestly, is the, the new uh, Amazon Echo. That's not here at the show, <laughs> I wish it was. Yeah, I'm, I'm shocked I've not seen one of those in the booth. That would be you know, the raffle that everyone would sign up. All right, well, Rick Braddy, President and CEO of SoftNAS, thank you so much for coming. Glad to have you on as a CUBE alum now. Uh, look forward to watching you know, your progress uh, along with the Amazon ecosystem. This is Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org. Uh, we will continue with wall-to-wall -wall coverage from Amazon reInvent 2014 right after the break. <laughs>